Welcome back, fight fans, to another video here on the fight game. What happened to Gennady Triple G Golovkin? It wasn't too long ago where the world of boxing couldn't stop talking about the middleweight division's boogeyman. He was once before nicked as the baddest man on the planet. But now talk is little heard about one of the sport's most forgotten middleweight champions when it comes to the spotlight of sports media. One of the problems often seen in boxing is sometimes when an incredible fighter comes along and he demolishes his opponents in the way that Golovkin did. He ends up garnering a stigma of invincibility. People think he's one of the greatest boxers in recent memory, and when he gets in a tough fight, people think he was never as good as previously perceived, and he's been exposed of some sorts. Which isn't exactly how boxing works. Boxing entails two men hitting one another. No one can evade the reality of what boxing is. You can't swim without getting wet, you can't box without getting hit. Gennady Golovkin has some tremendous wins on his record. For years, he was avoided by others in the division. He hits incredibly hard for a middleweight champion, and yet, we still don't see much talk of Golovkin unless it's against Canelo Alvarez. Many people claim he's too old, past his prime, and capable of remaining as one of the sport's kingpins. People say he didn't look impressive in the Steve Rolls fight, yet he still knocked him out. Golovkin scored a draw against Canelo in the first fight, where I felt Golovkin deserved to take home the win. We last saw Golovkin in the ring against Sergei Derevchenko, and if I'm being completely honest, I believe he was sick that night. And this belief didn't come from his performance, it came from me seeing his ring walk through the corridor. You can clearly see he looked ill. Gennady has been ill basically all week. And, what? Yeah, and uh, you know, it was, a, it was a real struggle for him, and he kept it completely quiet. And he won't even say anything, but I don't care because I will. I mean, getting sick affects anybody. I mean, there's nothing to talk about now because he chose to fight. It was his choice. He chose to continue to fight, so. Yep, yep, he was ill going into the dressing room, into the fights. Uh, you know, I kind of picked up on that in the dressing rooms. Uh, so I knew, you know, that he was a little down, but he, he manned up. So if you were to ask me, I'd say Golovkin has had an awfully unlucky string of events in the last few years. And because he hasn't looked invincible in some recent fights, everyone thinks he lost them, simply because of the fact that he didn't live up to people's unrealistic expectations. Speaking of the Derevchenko fight, who by the way is an extremely top-tier opponent and by no means an easy touch, he and Golovkin still gave the fans an absolute blockbuster of a fight, trading back and forth all the way to the sound of the final bell. Even if Golovkin wasn't sick, it's still an incredible performance by him to endure that hardship at the age of 37. I don't think people realize the kind of fitness an athlete needs to have to do this for 12 rounds straight. It does tell us that although he might be past his prime, years of a disciplined lifestyle will allow Golovkin to maintain his fitness for a long period of time. That's without mentioning the fact that Golovkin dropped him in the first round. Golovkin is still one of the top middleweights. There is absolutely no doubt about that when you look at his performances realistically. He's Triple G's biggest opponent at this point. Wow. Probably age? Yeah. Age or... Probably, <laughs> probably age. age. He turns 38 in April and he has his gifts working in his favor because his most prized gift, brute strength, is typically the last thing to go in a fighter when they age. I'm looking forward to assessing Golovkin's next fight where hopefully he will appear in full health. Sure, Father Time may remain undefeated, but we just saw Pacquiao look stronger than ever in his fight at 40 years old against Keith Thurman. So as long as Golovkin conditions himself, he can easily last longer in the sport of boxing. Take a look at Bernard Hopkins in this video. He's 51 years old here. Some fans may believe Golovkin is finished, but not me. With a bit of luck finally coming his way, I can definitely see Golovkin possibly succeeding at a secondary championship reign. Of course, we would like to see the Canelo trilogy. Canelo said that if Golovkin wanted a third fight, he'd have to get a belt. But then Canelo got stripped of his IBF belt when his management team couldn't come to an agreement with a bout of a mandatory challenger. 
Ironically, Golovkin then won that very same belt when he defeated Derevchenko as it was vacant. So now Golovkin has a belt. Canelo's belt as such. Canelo told Golovkin to get a belt, and I don't think Canelo knew he'd be getting his belt. Boxing politics has a really fun sense of humor sometimes. However, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that if we are to see a third fight between Canelo and Triple G, I wouldn't put it past Canelo to stage the fight at the super middleweight division of 168 pounds. While Canelo may think that would work in his favor, I wouldn't be so sure. Speaking of a trilogy fight, how would that fight even go? Most fans see Golovkin as the clear winner in the first fight. The G walks right through. Puts him back against the right from hand. the right hand. Canelo shakes his head. That usually means he got hit. But more fans see Canelo as the clear winner in the second fight. Oh, good shot. Great body shot by Canelo. Yes, he does. But oh, good oh, shot. Oh, left hook by Canelo. Hardest punch of the fight so far. Common terminology would say the boxer who won the second fight is getting better, and surely he would be even better again in a third fight. But past trilogies tell us this is not the case. For example, the great trilogy between Evander Holyfield and Riddick Bowe. Bowe won the first, lost the second, but then won by technical knockout in the third. By adopting a different strategic tack. Evander had thrown Riddick just enough off balance to, to make it a different fight. Third knockdown this of Holyfield's it. career, this he has the, the fourth, and that's it. That's it, that's it. So the argument of thinking Golovkin will lose a trilogy because he lost the second fight is perhaps not as clear-cut as you'd think. Golovkin is signed with a new trainer. How that coupling will unravel will take time to deduce. Golovkin has long been the best bang for your buck when it comes to exciting fights. No matter what age Golovkin is or what level of opposition he faces, I'll be tuning in to watch the big drama show that so many fans have grown to love. But this year in 2020, I expect Golovkin to pick up the pace in regaining his once before very respected reputation of being an unstoppable train in the ring. Perhaps you could say it's his road to redemption. I think the last couple of years in Golovkin's career was more so a rough patch rather than an ending. I believe he will shine again. He won't be invincible because no boxer is, but he will display again why so many fans love him around the world. And since we've just closed out the decade, let's take a look into the past to see Golovkin's journey of the last 10 years. He began the decade with a great knockout win over Milton Nunes, which would be only one of 20 knockouts. Yeah, you heard that right. For the next nine years, Golovkin would win 19 more fights within the sound of the final bell. I couldn't name every boxer he defeated as it would take too long, but all highlights you're seeing now are of the last 10 years. He has been, without a doubt, one of the most active fighters we've seen in boxing today. We see tremendous displays of his balance, economy of movements, punching power, his chopping overhand left, shifting of the feet, his looping right hand, his brilliant jab. Really, there is so much more to Gennady Golovkin than just a strong punch. He truly has had a remarkable last 10 years. It's had its ups and downs, and that is what makes a great fighter in the sport of boxing. Golovkin rose to fame when talks of a super fight between Canelo Alvarez heated up. When the fight finally happened, he didn't get the decision he deserved. But the fans know who won that first fight. I have the score 1-1 between them both now. I want to see a trilogy fight just as much as the next guy, but not because I want to see one or the other lose but because the first two fights were very entertaining. And with the second one being even better than the first, I can only imagine how good a third would play out to be. But Golovkin's career shouldn't ever rely on Canelo's name. He has wins over high caliber opponents, which makes Golovkin a name of his own. There are some good fights to be made out there, and I hope we see Golovkin go out with a bang when it comes to his next few fights. He's genuinely a great ambassador to the sport of boxing, and he deserves every fight fan's respect. 
What do you think? Are you excited to see Golovkin the next time he steps into the ring? What are your feelings about a final third fight with Canelo Alvarez? Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a like as it helps us grow the channel. We'll see you in the next video here on the Fight Game.